So yeah, we've got some kale growing here. There are few places where the connection between food and energy is more obvious than at the Bright Agritech warehouse in Laramie, Wyoming. You know, I didn't know that these were edible, though. You didn't? No, I didn't. Not until they planted them. Bright Agritech sells growing systems to indoor farmers. CEO Nate Story says because of that, he thinks about energy a lot. When we start paying for electricity directly, it becomes obvious that we're in an energy industry. We're consuming energy to, to create this produce. In Bright Agritech's case, the kale and microgreens and edible flowers are a direct product of coal, which supplies most of Wyoming's electricity. Yeah, I'm going to turn on a few. Is that all right? The energy inputs are obvious in the Bright Agritech warehouse. But they're hidden everywhere in our food supply chain. Up to a fifth of our nation's total energy use goes into growing, transporting, processing, and eventually preparing our food. Just need another uh, two ounces. Hayden Christensen thinks about that energy every day. And how many hours a day are you going to have these lights on? I'll probably work them up to 14 to 18, roughly. Christensen grows herbs and lettuce and grow rooms and greenhouses just outside Fort Collins, Colorado. He uses new, high-tech LED lights. They're just, they're a lot more efficient. Um, these are 300 watt, they say they're an equivalent of an 1,000 watt uh, regular light. Although labor and packaging are Christensen's biggest expenses, he says energy costs do add up. He estimates that in an average clamshell of basil, which retails for $1.50, nine cents was spent on electricity. Once his herbs are packaged, Christensen loads them up and takes them to a local Whole food store where they're sold. In this case, that trip is short. But even longer trips, say from a farm in California to the same Fort Collins Whole Foods, don't actually use a whole lot of energy, says ag economist Don Filmany. Everyone does assume, because they see the trucks, the trucks are the visible part, that the transportation sector is a huge part of both the cost and the energy of food production, and they're really quite minimal. Transportation accounts for less than 10% of all the energy used in the food chain. So what does actually consume a lot of energy? The store itself. We used 3 million kilowatt hours last year, which equates to approximately 240 thousand dollars for one year of electrical usage. In essence, all of our systems kind of competing with one another. You have HVAC trying to compete with the refrigeration. Refrigeration is trying to compete with the heat outside. Lighting is also uh, struggles based on daytime versus nighttime. So if any of the systems are off by a little bit, uh, it, it somewhat creates issues throughout the whole environment of the store. In other words, the fridges and freezers that keep your salad fresh and ice cream cold add up. Whole Foods has also installed more efficient lighting, as well as solar panels on the roofs of many of its stores. But it turns out retailers aren't even the biggest energy consumers in the food supply chain. In fact, they aren't even the second biggest. That distinction goes to something we consumers almost never see. The food processing sector. Even when we're buying at stores now, we're wanting things convenient. So we used to buy heads of lettuce, now we buy bag salad mixes. Or we used to buy chicken, now we buy the chicken already rotisseried with a marinade on it. So um, all those things that were in the name of convenience have tended to both make it be more energy intensive and more processed in a way. All that processing contributed to food-related energy consumption growing six times faster than overall energy consumption between 1997 and 2002. But the biggest energy consumer of all is also the most hidden, American households. Estimates vary, but approximately one-third of all the energy we use to produce food is consumed by us. Italian parsley. Craig Hibbert is an Inside Energy viewer and a former home energy auditor. He got in touch with us about monitoring energy use at home. And I use these little kilowatts to monitor the refrigerators. Then he puts all the information into a spreadsheet so he can geek out on the numbers. You know, a refrigerator uses uh, constant energy every day. And I, a lot of people put an extra refrigerator out in the garage, put some soda pop in it. And when you take into account the hundreds of millions of refrigerators, dishwashers, ovens, freezers, extra freezers we all have in our homes, the energy use is enormous. 
we're not intentionally making bad decisions, we're just uninformed. People will just make very constrained decisions on whatever's there, what's convenient. But in the next few years, expect to see more attention paid to the energy and climate impacts of our food. Today, people often look for organic or local labels on their food. In the future, perhaps they'll be looking for energy efficiency labels too. For Inside Energy, I'm Stephanie Joyce.